Hello and welcome to the Captain's Table, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Berserker01, Batman Shelley, your humble host and space bartender at the Astro Pub, and your host tonight here on uh, the Captain's Table, where I bring people from all over Star Citizen Universe to talk about Star Citizen. Uh, had a bit of a no one showed up because I was stupid and didn't schedule anybody uh, situation. And then I, I made a post and two two people popped up and were like, yeah, I'll do do, do the cabin stables today. So we got one going on. So thank you. Thank you to Nick and Night Cobb for coming in the last minute for this one. This uh, isn't the first situation I appeared on the captain's table with this. So last minute. Yes. <laughs> last minute. Hey, yeah, I'm a good. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> Uh, so let's let's start with uh, Night Cobb, because you're a, a newer uh, face. You haven't been on the Captain's Table before. Who are you? What do you do in Star Citizen? And where can, where can they find you? Uh, hi, I'm Night Cobb. Uh, so recent addition to the Star Citizen content creator uh, community. Kind of joined because uh, I like the community. I really enjoy a lot of the talent that presents itself. Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitch slash Night Cobb, uh, spelled with a one instead of a I, just for that little bit of en internet extra edginess. And then you can also find a meager and sparse amount of YouTube videos uh, as well. Links on my uh, Twitch profile. Uh, I've done a few videos, uh, just kind of testing the waters, uh, seeing what kind of content I like to create. Awesome. Uh, and for those of you who are, are wondering, yes, Nightcop doesn't have a camera on. He has uh, He's an active duty military personnel, so he does not have the ability to have camera on. It's kind of... Just yeah, super things. secret squirrel stuff. Yeah. Super secret squirrel stuff. Can't show the squirrels. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. Uh, that's fine. So, so if you, that's just, just a heads up because someone was, someone's going to make that comment in the comments. <laughs> it's, so, uh, you can, you can trust me though. I'm pretty. Oh, okay. very pretty. <laughs> very pretty. Uh, um, at, at least you're not, um, a, uh, uh, well, the joke that I learned from, um, from Kel was, uh, uh, if you're a mortar operator or no, it was from, from, uh, from tree who said, if you're a mortar operator, then you have some weird kinks. So uh, if, as long as you're, you're not that we're, we're good. Um, <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're all getting right. silent on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. And then next uh, we have uh, uh, someone you've, you've all know and love Mr. Hey, it's Nick. Who are you? What are you doing? Star citizen. And where can they find you? Hey, it's Nick, and you can find me on Twitch TV slash Hey, it's Nick. Uh, I'm mostly uh, in the background of a lot of content creator streams. You can find me seeing me getting shot and killed and blown up everywhere. So uh, there's a lot of that everywhere. But uh, yeah, that's about it. I just enjoy chilling, playing with people, and having fun in all the gameplays with everyone. So Awesome. Yeah. All right. So uh, as we've been doing recently, I've been trying to get more kind of specific in terms of our topics for discussion because uh, there was a recent ISC on some of this stuff. I decided it's probably a good idea to kind of do a little bit more deep dive and kind of more of a, a look at uh, the wrecks of the future, the future use of things like the frontier outposts and other outposts and the eventual creation of player built outposts. So with that all being said, let's get started with the first question, which is the wrecks that we've seen in ISC. What are your initial thoughts on the new wrecks, uh, the Montreal-based wrecks there, uh, Nick? Me right away. Okay. Ooh, last one to Montreal, yourself, so. <laughs> Montreal is the... Montreal is like just kicking it out of the park again, batting it out of the park. Just every time, any time Montreal shows something... It's just, it's just, it looks so good. And it's just showing the, every time Montreal's showing something, they're just showing how efficient that team is and how good they do their job. And my favorite part is definitely the way the 600 uh, derelict looks like suspended in cables and the level design and art around that looks so amazing. <laughs> and like the set dressing and just, Ah, oh, it's just showing how good that Montreal team is. And I'm just like, I need more. I need more of this. Just let them loose. I feel like I've heard it before, though. I feel like Montreal's being held back in a way because I feel like there's just so much potential that they're like just leaking out. And it's just like, let let them loose. Let them loose. Um, 
but yeah, I'm really excited with like the new derelicts, uh, the new colonial outposts with like the firing range, just mm-hmm. to be able to just shoot bottles and stuff and have like fun and silly around when like you're not really doing anything there or in the downtime in between time. It's just I like the little small details like that, that they're adding into these new environments that aren't necessarily missions or anything, but just some a little tiny small thing that you can just do to pass the some, time some, there. Some character, right? Some character for for those those with locations. Yes, character. Uh, Nightcap, your same thoughts. What are your thoughts on the, the what we've seen for the, uh, the the new Rex and such? Like I can't agree more than uh, with Nick about it. The big thing, and you kind of brought it up actually in that last statement, is. What I'm really looking forward to, to go with these amazing, incredible environments that Montreal is just churning out and churning out. Uh, the Reclaimer uh, derelict that we just got with uh, 317.1 is incredible level design. And they're just repeating it uh, with the 600i and the Mercury Star Runner, these outposts. And I find it one of the bigger ironies of Star Citizen that they give us this incredible ground content. Don't be wrong, they're doing the space stuff too. Like the reclaimers in space are also really great missions and level design. That ship just seems designed for it, uh, along with a few others. Uh, the 890 jump already had its thing. Uh, mm-hmm. But the thing that I'm really looking forward to go with those colonialism outposts that they're showing, or those derelict outposts on uh, the ISC, is the, the AI characters that go there. I'm really looking forward to seeing them being populated. You know, they talk about you know, where there's going to be some people there to salvage the ship, some people there that are you know, making it more of a home. And that was the one thing missing from that ISC that I was like, I need, um, I want to see all that AI represented in these, uh, these outposts. Because if you if you just go there to do the shooting range, which does look cool, don't get me wrong, the shooting range did was a really nice little cool little feature. But uh, I'm really excited about the mission content and the AI that comes with it. Awesome. Yeah, the, the, the thing that really struck me was how fast they've been able to turn it around. Because Montreal, like, we, sh- we saw evidence for the 600 and the MSR being made back in, like, January or February. And they're turning it around in, like, what, six months? You know, <laughs> from, yeah, from concept Yeah, it's really to, quick. It's really quick, especially, especially for Star Citizen, but especially for just video games in general. That takes a while to do those sorts of things. Especially when you look at like the time frame of releasing the the reclaimer to these two, mm-hmm. they went from they, they might have started it six months ago, but they already went from the reclaimer to two other ones within like a patch cycle. Yeah. So it's like they're working on it. They started the work a long time ago, but they're working on it really efficiently within that time frame to have these other ships come out immediately after. So. Uh, yeah, and and I think the other thing that's really important to remember is that the thing that I think that's speeding up Montreal is that Montreal, from its very inception, has been building tools. Everything they do is tool based. So they build a tool, and then they use that tool to build what they need to, and then they they build another tool to to make sure the next thing is faster. So I can almost guarantee you that like the the process that made they made the six hundred I and the MSR wreck uh, is faster because they built a tool in between their them building out the uh, the reclaimer and then the next versions which i'm sure is going to be like i know they have the 890 that they're working on um and they have uh, a couple other versions things that they're working on as well that uh that will be even faster because they'll have more tools to kind of populate it and those sorts of things um and hopefully at some point we'll see they'll be able to just drop these anywhere they want at any time uh kind of thing which would be nice uh, all right. Well, let's let's move on to the next one topic we're talking about, which is uh, the colonialism outposts. What did you? Um, well, actually, no. Let's 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 revert back and let's talk about Rex. F- the future of Rex. What do we? What do you think the, the we're going to see with the future of Rex? And what are, which, what what is your expectations for these sorts of Rex sites in the future? And we'll start with you, Night Cup, on this since you were the last one to talk. So. Uh. Uh, so one of the things that I, I watched recently actually was an older, uh, uh, what do they call it? Burning something burning down, burn downs, burn, burn downs down. with, yeah. uh, yeah, the burn downs, uh, of the like 2017s, 2016s mm-hmm. when they were talking about, I think 3.0, 2.6 and Tony Z spends a lot of time talking about, you know, the, the stranded pilot of a wreck and you come down 
and that pilot has either you know the kind of the standard hey bring me uh to some other space station or maybe it's an ambush but it's you know part of a rec site that's procedurally generated and you know comes with content uh what i really hope to see with these amazing locations that they've been able to build for these wrecks that they've already done the 600i the msr even the caterpillar what you already have for the the caterpillar rec sites mm -hmm. is if they can adapt that same level design to quality content that goes with that ai and that and not only that but that procedural generation where you come to a world and you accept a mission or you accept a distress call whatever flavor it takes and you end up on that planet and this new spot that you've never been and that wreck looks like it's been there it doesn't look i don't want to say the word cheap i don't that's just not the right word but it looks like it's a part of the landscape like it belongs like like it was something that was meant that happened and believably happened and then you go down and you interact with that location in a meaningful way because right now they're killing it on how it, on the looks on the looks mm -hmm. alone they have won uh, as was demonstrated in ISC and what we already had for the reclaimer derelicts and the caterpillar derelicts they look fantastic and they they mesh with the environment they have succeeded in that count you know the the next big thing is can it be procedurally done and quickly and easily so that the teams don't have to do it and you know, does it does it mesh well with the mission feature team and their question. product? Yeah, uh, Nick. That's what I'm hoping question. to see from it. Sorry, <laughs> I oh, kind of oh, answered God. it with a question, but that's what I'm hoping to see from it is that it it becomes part of the universe that's believable, and it's it's not so much just a location or a set of locations, but it's something that's interactable and you know generates good uh, player driven and uh, AI driven content. That's what I want to see the big thing out of yeah, these new locations. It's a little odd to have like a, a location where some, you always know something ha is like where a crashed ship is all the time, no matter what, even though like the mission's like, Hey, this, this ship crashed recently and we're missing a bunch of this, <laughs> this cargo. It's like, yeah, it's been here for literally three years, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's so, like how many yeah. times am I going to collect cargo from the exact same derelict? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they kind of even brought it up in their their ISC when they talk about, you know, this these people are here to salvage the ship. And with salvaging coming online, a lot of questions are coming up with the gameplay associated with these incredible locations that they've built. You know, if they've got a salvaging mechanic coming online at the same time as these incredible wreck sites, you know, what's to stop the players from harvesting them? Do they spool up with a new server? And then, yeah, then it gets into the whole persistent entity streaming. And I'm not, I'm not sure we're ready to dive into that rabbit hole yet with this, but... Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just really excited to see where what kind of content they can bring to the forefront with these incredible new locations that they seem really capable of churning out very quickly. Yeah. Uh, Nick, same question with you. What do you see for the future of these wrecks? And for the future of these wrecks, I definitely see them going away from what we're talking about, the like the pre-scripted stationary locations that are the same. I, I see it at first being very quickly not quickly, but at the very first, at least next step of iteration on like the overall derelicts, it's going to be probably like the dynamic generation of all of them and actually have them, you know, be erased, reset, location reset to go back to normal and then have find a new spot to place a derelict dynamically. I really want to see that come in and play. play. And then, then when those are generated, you can actually get a new mission and they can generate mis different mission dynamics based around it that's that's what i really want to see i want to see like the dynamic procedural um spawning and mission generation tied in with them as well as exploration side of things where some dare they can generate just a derelict sitting there with no mission marker and explorers actually needed to go scan or find them through exploration gameplay i mean that would be a really good early iteration on a real exploration gameplay of you're looking for something that you don't know is there or not. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's, that's where I want to see, um, see, see the, uh, derelict go toward, at least in the near future, long-term future. I think I would love it if we could just actually salvage them, you mm -hmm. know, rip them apart and then have the salvage gameplay tied in with that. Um, that might be coming in three eighteen. 
but I, I, the main thing is the main question is like, what are you going to do with all the ones that are actually set dressed now? Are those going to be like a permanent fixture where it's just like, don't touch with your salvage rays. Mm -hmm. Like we're not going to let you or what, but I think it's going to be uh really interesting. And I think it's going to turn change pretty quickly with where they are with the tech at the moment. Yeah. I, I kind of agree with both of you that it's like, I'd like to see these more become procedural, the more more generated on the fly because of Quanta or or that kind of thing. But I also know that CIG really wants these to be hero locations, like uh, the the what is it? The Reclaimer. It's the Ghost Hollow. Like Ghost Hollow is going to be Ghost Hollow. You're never going to see that go away. Um, and and because they're never going to see it go away, I think they they definitely don't want you to be going in there with salvage lasers and rip the whole thing up. So yeah. Uh, so I think we're going to have some bending of disbelief, some, 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 um, oh, what is it? Uh, um, oh, I don't think it will be too much disbelief because you can make it very believable by, by actually looking at Ghost Hollow and be like, it's already been salvaged to crap. There's nothing worth salvaging nothing there. Worth it's salvaging. all, it's all yeah. rust and garbage and all the components already taken. Yeah. Like, yeah. But you know, players, <laughs> players are yeah. going to try and use their salvage beam weapons to draw, you know, graffiti in the hall. Yeah, we. Where's Willie? That's, yep, that's what we do. we've been over that before. Yep. <laughs> do you uh, need like some? I think Paul's talking about like that arbitrary, like, hey, this is this site is a salvageable wreck, but you can't really salvage it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the suspension of disbelief, a little, a little bit of suspension of disbelief. Thank you, Fast Card, for that one. Um, in the sense that they're going to be these are locations which are used as, uh, like. Mission rally and rally points. Stuff. Yeah. Rally points for, 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 um, for specific factions. So they want to try to preserve yeah. those as much as possible. Um, so. And that's understandable no. because as a player, you want to like show up to certain locations with some continuity to it as well. Like you want the procedurally generated stuff, but I don't want microtech to be like bombed by an A2 and then I can never go to microtech again. Sorry to bring up the A2 thing. Uh, <laughs> but like, that's what, I mean, like that's the continuity I want. Like I don't want new Babbage, you know, demolished by you know bombs and player shenanigans. I want to be able to go there and buy fancy outfits yeah. and, you know, a new Moby glass. If I don't have that continuity, then, or at least that some semblance of continuity, then it becomes a little bit more difficult. But at the same time, everybody wants something new and exciting. So I want to be able to go to a planet and find a wreck that I can interact with and potentially salvage and do cool missions on and maybe even come back there and find, okay, well, if it still exists there, maybe now it's a nine tails or mm. some other gang outfit uh, has taken over where once it was a colony you know, of like homesteaders or something like that. That's, that's cool gameplay. And I don't need that kind of continuity for that outpost necessarily, but you know, there should be some, uh, where it's like, okay, you know, if I, I want to go refuel my ship or I want to go interact with a certain, you know, meaningful AI, I want to be able to go there and not have to worry about, you know, some players come by and salvaged the ship and drawn a bunch of uh, phallic symbols in the hull and kind of ruined yeah. my immersion factor that way. I mean, I, I, I would definitely be cool with seeing some of those procedural wrecks. Like you go there and it's like, as you said, like a, a, a small group of like, uh, they'd say in Hurston, right? A small group of, of, of ex workers who are trying to scrape out a, a life in the, uh, using this, this wreck as a hull as a, like a home and then come back two two weeks later and it's being controlled by like a gang. And then two weeks later you see nothing but bodies everywhere and a big blast crater. Cause a player came through and dropped an A2 on the, uh, <laughs> a bomb on the, on the thing. So you just see the aftermath and see the evolution of something like that would be cool. Um, but I agree that there just needs to be some, some anchors that you just can't mess with. Um, we actually talked about this a little bit before the stream. Like I think, and we'll talk about this here in a bit as well, but I think there is some wiggle room that CHG could have with like some places like that being messed with as long as they could implement it in a way that would make sense and also could be visually and gameplay interesting for players. You know, seeing something that like it's Homestead that gets dropped a bomb on and it gets destroyed, but then you come back later and you see, you know, ships or people repairing the walls and putting everything back up and that kind of thing, so... Uh, Can you just imagine the processing power associated with that, though? Like, yeah. I, I want that, too. But it's one of those things like, <laughs> man, we struggle to get the AI to respond yeah. when you come up and punch them in the face right now. Yeah. 
And the idea of AI responding to physicalized damage on, you know, buildings in Floorville uh, is just, I, you know, and I, yeah, it's daunting. It's daunting. And don't get me wrong, the scope of this game is ambitious to say the least, but it's like one of those things. By the way, Paul, just bringing this up, uh, we've probably delayed development for another season. Um, but, Chris, Chris doesn't watch me. Are yeah, you kidding me? Yeah. No. Yeah, Chris Roberts is sitting somewhere like, Chris Roberts wow. doesn't watch me. This is cool. Well, and there is a way you can cheat some of that idea too. Like you could, you could do some cheating like, like uh, you, where you see a lot of like RTSs and other games where they have stages upon which a construction is happening, where you have like you just see like an AI kind of going uh, like randomly nailing something, and then a couple seconds later, like the progress bar fills up, and it suddenly boop, the walls are up. like <laughs> you don't see the walls actually going up. You just suddenly see like like halfway constructed, fully constructed, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, they they could easily do that. Not easily, but they could do that. Um, in a way where, you know, you, if you visit it and you're see it at a certain stage, that's all you will see at that stage. You won't actually see it progress to the next stage until everyone leaves and no yeah. one can see the tree fall in the forest. And then it does, and then yeah. it goes to the next stage. Um, that, that I, it would be doable at least to the point where like we could actually see the progress when we revisit it but mm -hmm. I don't think they need to go all in and say, I want to see every brick be put back into yeah. place. <laughs> like, I, no. I, I think I, I think people are okay with seeing the same brick being put back into that same little hole yeah. over and over Hammer again. Hammer the same nail over and over again <laughs> and go do a little yeah. routine while I'm there. I don't want to see the entire house be built, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, don't. you and I don't want to see the entire house be built, but you know there are players out there that would be like, oh, I'm yeah. going to stay here oh, and yeah. watch this. Yeah, I'm just going to stay here and know. watch this. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah uh let's let's move on to the next one T talking about like the you know construction and building stuff like that the the frontier outposts now what we've seen with frontier outposts um evolve over the last year or so the latest uh, update is the talking about these overlays where they take a frontier outpost base and then they just can slap an overlay on and turn it into a, a an uh, outlaw hideout and a research outpost or whatever um they showed off just the outlaw version, but they they've kind of implied that they can just start slapping these onto this to, to these prefab buildings um, as much as they want to. So uh, let's start with you, Nick, on this one. Uh, what are your thoughts on what you saw? What did you, you any likes, dislikes, that kind of thing? I am very excited for the overlay system because this very much ties into the uh, the actual procedural systems going to be used when the game's actually alive. So, for instance, they could just create an overlay for an outpost and you can see it back in the, when they show the citizen con demo of like how they placed um an area over a building and it set dressed it well this is doing it for the interior and it, this can do it very much for like you know piracy and everything but also this also will will tie into the actual base building side of things so that when you get an outpost maybe you have to select what kind of overlay type of outpost you want to get <laughs> And then that's what your will determine what's going to be inside of your outpost. And I, I'm very excited because this like this system ties into just so many things that can happen with like visiting different locations and everything and how like the AI will interact with it and where you'll find certain things can always be different. And doing it procedurally through overlays is just going to be so, ah, it's just, it's just the limp, the the limits are limitless, I feel, with it. And it's in, up until, like, you know, them defining the rules of what it, where things can and cannot be uh, for each cert set overlay. And it's just them placing the overlay on the building It just picking out, this is where things are going to be. And then, you know, that you can just do that to a, th a thousand different outposts throughout the verse and then just... It'll all it'll look similar but different everywhere, and then you'll n determine which ones are which immediately, and then you know have being able to actually visibly tell if it's a Nine Tails outpost when you're inside of it mm -hmm. versus like another gang members or just a regular faction who's just like a civilian just living their life and just the amount. Oh, I'm just I'm excited for it. I'm really that's, excited for that, the that's tech. a that's a cool idea though. <laughs> being able to like just glance, take a glance and be like. That's a Nova Riders hideout. How do you know? You see that symbol right there? That's only you only find that a Nova Riders outpost. And it kind of makes sense. It kind of fits in with, 
how, you know, gangs and, and factions in real life kind of tend to marked areas. So you have, they can, you know, recognize locations and stuff like that. So if you get within the know, you can go like, ah, yeah, mm-hmm. I know and, exactly by just a glance what, what, what we're looking at, you know, which is. And cool. additionally, with what we were talking about before, with how the procedural systems and how we would want to see an outpost, like change hands and stuff under that. With the overlay yeah. tech, that's just doable. Just yeah. swap just it, flip. just flip flop it to this person, that person, that stage, this stage, like yeah. unoccupied. Like it's yes, mm. yeah. <laughs> it fits. It fits well in with with with, with gameplay aspects as well as like narrative, telling a story in the universe. So, Nikon. I really agree. Yeah. The well, I'll I'll tack on real quick to what you just talked about. The you know, it's not even just the gangs. Like I I just envisioned that scene from aliens, you know, where you have like, they go to the, the colonial outpost and they have all the Wayland yutani um, iconography all over the mm-hmm. place. And that would be just something cool to see, you know, okay, these, these uh, colonists came here, you know, sponsored by this corporation. Uh, they have these, these things, uh, these uh, emblems and everything like that, or maybe certain uh, gear there that is representative of that corporation and their sponsorship. So adds that little bit of extra narrative. I mean, don't be wrong. Everybody's really excited about the gangs. Me too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Pyro. And I guess if I if if the question's to me, I'll go ahead and talk about uh, the one of the more exciting parts about that that overlay uh, was the jail cells down in the bowels of the out uh, the homestead. You know where they have the con- the converted brigs, and mm-hmm. that for me answered a lot of questions about pyro and the law system because it's essentially gang controlled and it looks like they're i don't know if you guys noticed the buttons they have buttons look like mm-hmm. interactables on the front of the jail cells uh i one it's a obvious like mission content like i can see going and freeing npcs from the various gangs that have taken over the the colonial outposts i'm really excited about that it'd be really awesome if like one of the missions is to liberate one of those colonial outposts that uh, maybe you've become attached to. Maybe you go there really often to refuel your ship, and you know while you're in Pyro, and that's and that becomes a thing that comes up to you like every once in a while. Or maybe you land there and just find that out one day, as a as a Nine Tails or a, a Fire Rats member just like greets you at the uh, the ship landing pad, and it's like, yeah, the price is going to be a lot more, buddy. Uh, and then you're like, whoa, 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 what happened to the people that run this place before? And you <laughs> kind of slowly find out. Uh, that they're in the jail cells, or maybe some of them. That's yeah. a that's a liberation option. Uh, but it it that whole segment I like a lot because it answers some questions and then kind of brings to the forefront a lot of questions that we already have about the colonialism outposts. Because then they immediately tied it. And I don't want to jump ahead, Paul, but it's uh, fine. the whole the whole um, landing area that they had the gray box Valkyrie for. And they're talking about resource management, and you have these uh, landing areas where you can refuel, resupply, because we've talked about the whole one landing zone in Iro being Ruin Station. So a lot of questions are up about, well, what do you do with your ship when you're not near Ruin Station? That's a really big system. And is it is it a feasible thing to head to these homesteads that are on the outskirts and refuel, repair, do some, and to what level? So yeah. a lot of great questions and I'm really excited about what they're building. I don't know if you guys drew the same association, but I really love that shot with the Valkyrie and that that depressed circle in the uh-huh. land. Does that not does that not spark landing bay or docking Tatooine. bay ninety four? Yeah, Tatooine, yeah. yeah. Docking yeah. bay ninety four, <laughs> Tatooine. Yep. Yeah. Of course. Immediately thought the same thing and I was like, yeah. Oh Star Wars influence right there. I mean the the whole frontier, like all of the frontier outposts, look like the the like uh, the, the the ranches and and Mos Eisley. Like they're they're intentionally built very similar to Mos Eisley. It's, you can kind of see that 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 DNA yeah, in there. They're pulling all the sci-fi heartstrings of ah oh, yeah, yeah take me there. I want to live there. <laughs> I mean it works like yeah. for a lot of us, so I don't blame them. <laughs> Uh, and it helps that, like you know, the 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 the, the buildings of Mos Eisley are based off of actual buildings in Tunisia, uh, where you know, uh, because of the they're building for they were built for uh, keeping keeping the the heat out and cool in, so they work in terms of like realistic looking as well. And so, frontier outposts would be similar; they'd be built with low tech t- uh, materials to 
function for the environments they're in. So uh, can't survive above ground, go underground. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I will also add in with the, with the whole, the, the frontier outposts and like the overlay systems is just, y'all kind of hit or hit on the head. I think the, the other thing that's really exciting about the overlay system is as Nick pointed out, is that it has a lot, it can, it has a lot of potential to change how to, to, to tell us how uh, base building will work. Because if you have an overlay system, you could possibly build a system. You use a see so you could make a, a interactable or like a screen where you can plan out where you're going to be building your base. And then, um, you, you have these prefab like versions, which are just the overlays that you can then say, I want this overlay, I want this overlay. You can choose which one is which. And so it will already set everything up for you. So it's not, it's a lot easier for you to do rather than having to manually build and place everything. Uh, oh yeah. Especially, especially when the, I know there's people out there who love customizable housing and MMOs that will mm -hmm. want to like decorate every single piece and place it exactly where they want. That's a big part in a lot of MMOs, MMOs. But I, f I feel like just letting people just access it through an through an overlay system just to be like, I just want a base that works. Just give me a price and let me do it. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I think that works as just as just as well, at least to get people started. And like, I hope CIG later down the road lets people just individually place any object they want <laughs> if they can have it in their inventory. Um, but I, I think that the overlay system is a great start, at least in tech tech wise to get to that point yeah and, and, up a good question about persistent hangers too like is that overlay system functional within the persistent hanger universe yeah because uh building a building a persistent hanger in a in, in a in a in a player controlled uh base makes it seems like it's a a no-brainer they're going to need some sort of way of preserving your ships all on the planet that you're you know doing um, I think um, the other thing that it, that it brings up is the that the frontier system is obviously something that's here to say. It's not just built for, uh, it's not just built for pyro. It's built for the entire game. So these frontier styles, because they've even started adding them into Microtech, we'll start probably see them on Daymar. We'll definitely see them on Hurston. I think. Um, these, well, these... Daymar is the uh, the next like outpost that's like mm -hmm. a derelict outpost that's coming in Daymar, and they're even saying it's like Daymar is the test bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So that's that's I feel like the first one we're going to be seeing in is Daymar, and where you don't see it in Pyro yet. Yeah, yeah. otherwise think, known as Tatooine too. Yes, that's that's Daymar. Daymar <laughs> yeah. is Tatooine. Yeah, yeah. It's like, is that's Tatooine. what everybody thinks about it. <laughs> Not as flat, but just as good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it also shows off a lot of, of of how Rastar has evolved. So like Rastar is just the tool that they're using for uh, making um, making these bases in the first place. Yeah. Uh, shows that, that 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 tool is improving as they go along and and uh, lots of other tools being developed it, it's it's a good sign because it means that they're they're away from the basics for a lot of these and they're starting getting into the details you know oh yeah we have frontier outposts now how do we make those outposts unique depending on where you go you know do we add like uh banners here do we add like a windmill like how do we how do we improve the visual language for us to distinctly to tell the difference between each outpost um so all right you know of uh, the monthly report that was one of the things that kind of tied in with the isc that really interested me was all the major work on ai that they're doing mm -hmm. and it seems seems conveniently timed to go with a lot of this okay we've got locations and now it's a now it's time to populate them uh, yeah. once again N not just ai but also fauna you know the 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 sudden influx of like they're making animals now the stone bug for instance you know they're working on animations yeah. like actually hearing that they're yeah. working on animations for these animals is like they're going to want to implement these in game cuz as soon as they got their animations in then it's just set setting it to code and then just front yeah. free and uh you know they want to have that moment where you walk the mandalorian moment where you walk up to a to an outpost and you see a a, a, a like a like a corral with with kazi grazers chilling there you know and uh having to to or or, or uh walking walking up to an outpost that's, that's been abandoned and suddenly the rock starts moving and suddenly it's a whip crab that's coming at you you know that, that kind of those sorts of moments so yeah, as long as we leave the spider things out from that one ice world i'm down 
<laughs> <laughs> all the spiders. I want all the yes. creepy crawlies. I want a horror game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the pyro crab is pretty close, but yeah. Uh, it's it's one of those, or what is it now? They renamed it. They just it's renamed the whip, it. It's it? called the whip crab. The whip crab. Whip crab. Yeah. Whip the, or the whip, whip crab. The whip. The whip. The whip. Not the work. Not the whip. whip in progress. Not the work in progress. Whip. But the the like whip it good kind of uh, whip. Whip crab. Cool. Whip. Cool. Like cool. Whip. Cool whip. The cool whip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but let's. We've already kind of touched on this. Let's let's talk about the last topic. The the major topic, which is. Uh, Player housing and player, the future of player run bases. Um, based off of what we've seen so far, uh, I want you to to give me an idea of where do you think we're going to see, do you think we'll see player bases in, say, the next year? And where do you think long-term CIG's kind of, CIG seems to be going towards with the player bases? We'll start with you on this one, Nightcob. Ooh. Uh, in terms of when, uh... So, I'll be honest with you. The, I know, I know. The uh, the ISC, uh, don't be wrong, they teased it. And I know Jared talked about the whole building your credit empire and or thwarting other players and theirs mm -hmm. in terms of kind of like the base building, resource management, re refineries that you might be building. And I know the Rastar tool has come a long ways. They've shown that in some several other uh, developments. But... I don't know. I just don't see base building being a thing for at least a couple more years. I, I look at it as the next big player thing, and at least I'm hoping, because it feels mm -hmm. small and it feels achievable. And we kind of mentioned already, it's like the, the player habs, uh, player hangers. Like, I'll settle for that. I'll settle mm -hmm. for the ability to, to manage my ship within a hangar, populate that hangar with things, uh, especially with the persistent entity streaming coming along, you know, if I put if I want to have an Aegis coffee cup and put it, you know, on my workbench in my persistent hangar and know that it'll be there every time, that's the thing I really look forward to in the short term. The base building brings up so many questions that they haven't brought to the forefront with gameplay yet. Like they go with persistence. They need to test persistence, I feel like, first, and not just test it before like a three eighteen release. They need to test it and how it affects our gameplay and where they want to go with gameplay because I mean, persistence and the dynamic economy, I feel like are two driving factors on how game, or sorry, how base building comes into the gameplay forefront. And if those questions aren't answered, I don't, I don't really want to see player base building uh, destroy the system uh, before it's ever really implemented. So I'm hoping a hot take. I'm hoping player base building is a long ways off because okay. I feel like we've got to answer a lot of questions before we ever get there. Nick, what are your thoughts? I th I think we're really close to actually seeing player base building be able to be done, but I again, it's going to not be done until the pioneers in because base building is going to require the pioneer because it's the only ship that we players have available to actually build bases and outposts and see how that all comes in together. So unless CIG is working on the pioneer in secret and not telling us, um, which uh. It, you know, they're just. Ref I, I then I highly doubt that it's coming anytime soon, even if the tech's available. But outside of that, like once persistent energy streaming comes in, we will like technically they could implement a land the land beacon system soon and the land claiming pretty, I think, pretty quickly if they um if they wanted to do that. Because once persistent energy streaming is, then land claims are a hundred percent could be a thing because it would all be persistent. So I, th I would like to see that system come in first and just tread the waters of seeing who can claim land and see how that system works. And, you know, may maybe you could like pay somebody to like pay an NPC or whatever, just to be like, just place an outpost on my land somewhere and just the game will just generate one randomly. But I don't see actual base building in until the pioneers coming in, but when it does come in, I would really like to see the actual, um, not just homesteads, but I would like to actually see things like farms, drug labs, you know, um, manufacturing facilities. I, you know, have your own little kind of mini, mini game where you're kind of doing a little satisfactory thing of like, you know, trying to get resources and produce something so that you can load up and sell. Or, you know, sneak away and sell and not get caught and all that so, sort of stuff. 
So you prefer like a like a version one goose rate rather than a version zero, but rather than just like, hey, here's a hab, goodbye. But like like when they actually <laughs> did have it, be like, yeah, it's this is all of the things. So yeah, I, I would I wouldn't really necessarily I would want implementation zero. Like I, implementation zero, I feel would just be like you know, you know I, I actually yeah, I I want to wait until the pioneer is actually in and ready, and they work on the tech along the way until the pioneer is ready. Mm -hmm. And then maybe have tests out land claiming and seeing how that is as a zero and then, and then a, be able as to. a zero land claiming, just seeing, you know, what can be done with land, you know, land ownership, work out any bugs with that. Mm -hmm. And then just kind of, and then from there, just like, you know, wait until work on the tech until, until the pioneer is ready mm -hmm. and then release it instead of trying to work out other ways to work around it to get players to come in and do it like the like i feel like that'd be a lot better for everyone with base building is mm -hmm. wait until the pioneer is ready let us actually build the bases with the pioneer and work on flushing out the tech as much as possible on the back end for us so that when the pioneer does come out we're, we have a lot less issues when we actually go try to build bases like i think mm -hmm. it'd be great for players to actually get land claims and like explore around, maybe get like a quantum marker to their own land claim and whatnot. But outside of that, I, I just, I really want the tech to cook in the oven to be more until, more, until it's ready, more fleshed out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to agree with both y'all in the sense that I don't think we're going to see player bases anytime soon. I think the, the key with player bases to understand is that the player bases uh, require so much other tech that's important, that's important to star citizen to be finished things like uh server meshing things like shards they probably need to have smaller shards than they currently do uh th th than they will in the first implementation you'll they'll need to have that almost complete shard system in place because the way that they plan on doing it seems like they're going to it's going to be based off the shard you're in not in in like persist through all shards so if you build a base on microtech in uh, shard 1752, that's the only place that base is. So you have to go to that shard to be able to um, access it. And there's only so many, so many other problems and other issues that can come up with that idea that it almost makes more sense to wait until the game is more fleshed out before you reach that. I do think that what Jared was, was hinting at was not player-based constructions, but player-owned constructions. And what I mean by that is going into an area, taking over the, the, like, say, a small outpost and then controlling that outpost as your own, either purchasing it or by controlling it through force and then using that as a, a base of operations that you control as long as you control it. And uh, have oh, that, would be, that would be amazing for PvP. And I yeah. would yeah. love to see that. I would love to see that i know i've been on twitter the past few days being like lol pvpers like yeah. you know don't look at my twitter because then you'd think i'm like anti-pvp and everything but mm -hmm. i am actually totally for pvp i just like to point out technicalities yeah <laughs> you like you like being technically correct yes i get it i, I, I like being technically correct just point point po poking people and seeing them yeah. squirm and i get a good giggle out of it <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a good point. I didn't think about that as like a player owned like instead of Jump Town where it's a drug drug production facility. I mean, it's like a legitimate mining operation. Uh, mm -hmm. You know where they refine. You know, you know maybe a nearby Quantanium field. That's almost that's almost a value in and of itself too. Almost more yeah. valuable than the Jump Town. Depending on it, you, that might yeah. spur a lot of PvP uh, content if you found out like, oh man, I found I I found this you know entire uh, field full of Quantanium rocks. Or, you know, maybe it's a planet with an asteroid ring. You know, this is long in the future, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, hey, you know, we have this player controlled outpost nearby and it cuts your time down uh, to take it back to a refinery, refine it, make more money faster. That's what everybody's about. But yeah, even if it be... is, even if it is a refinery itself and you have to get prospectors to mine, fill them up, but you need to control it. I mean, that would bring in mining into a PVP area if it's contested and being like, well, you need to get ores in for the production facility to run and you need to yeah. get cargo ships to get the, the, the ores out for this like crazy sale off. Like what, what if it's all the grisium and all that stuff or even quantanium. And it's just like, you know, there's going to be, and the only way to get the sale from it and to get it into your ship is if you own it 
or and you need or control it and that's the only way the system's going to like allow you to like you know withdraw it so yeah i think that'd and, be really neat I can also oh that'd be this. really cool if it's like a quota you need to meet like yeah. hey, you've got to you've got to mine this much and you've got to bring us this much raw ore but as long as you keep doing it you're a prime contractor and we'll refine it at a reduced cost and this kind of efficiency and you can you know sell that much more i don't know if they're anywhere close to that but uh that would be that would definitely be something that would bring a player controlled location uh and you know tie in a, a new game loop yeah other than I, just straight combat and I, and i think it would also you could also add, add it into uh reputation gameplay and mission gameplay especially with pyro since all the gangs are fighting each other all the time for territory there could be a, an area where like you're told like hey this outpost is controlled by our or by our uh, our rivals, but it's it's got a refinery on on station. Take that refinery and hold it for us. And wait until X, Y, or Z comes by, and so you so you have a mission. So you have to basically take and hold this outpost until reinforcements arrive, and then AI will show up, and it also spawn missions for like uh, players who are allied to those those groups. Like, hey, they just took our outpost. Go take it back for for us. So you have this mixed PvP PvE experience, which is very much what, it, what they're doing with like Korea. Like that seems like what they're trying to do with Korea. So it's obviously that's the direction they want to go because I could like, easily see them, you know, do that. But also just be like a player shows up and just goes, "I'm just, I'm just going to kill everyone in this outpost, and now I can control everything. So stop me, you know." <laughs> um, right. I control the flow. Yeah. <laughs> um, spice must flow. Yeah. The spice must flow. I control it. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, I think I think that might be the case. Um, any other final thoughts you all want to leave before we, we move into the question and answer session? Uh, sorry for the dog barking. That's it's not fine. really a final thought on the. Uh, <laughs> sorry for the. He's a good I gotta, boy. I got that's a thunderstorm all. rolling and she yeah. doesn't like uh, thunder. So, yeah, she's, she's a good girl. That's that's all the answer is. She's she's trying to stay yeah, yeah. away the thunder. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I don't really have any. Sorry. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, I, I was gonna say I don't really have any final thoughts, but I, I'm just gonna say I'm glad where we are seeing just within since the last Citizen Con to now is like the actual progress of how it's been been coming. And I know it's not like you know amazing progress that you a lot of people would want to see, but this is actually really good progress for the longevity and like it'll for how procedural it will be. It's really good for the scalability sooner. It will scale large a lot quicker than what I think a lot of people are thinking it will be. And I'm excited for it. And it's in a good place right now. Yeah, I'll tag on to Nick real quick. And just I, the thing that impresses me is how quickly they are churning these out. And that definitely demonstrates the whole uh, procedural aspect that's come along a, a, a long way uh, with their tool development. And I'm really just looking forward to seeing the rest of the project kind of catch up to the locations, which I you know, I feel like that's probably got to be the the you know the lower model foundation of what they've got to work with. Like you can't just have AI floating out in the middle of space. You got to have a place where, uh, and and same thing with mission content. You've got to have a place where this happens. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they can churn out the places that much faster means that there's no holdup to the okay. What can we now deliver in terms of gameplay with those locations? And you know those points of interest. So if they can burn out the points of interest and the derelict settlements, crash sites, colonial outposts, flavor them differently with the different overlays and all that comes with them visually and in a meaningful way, then the gameplay will hopefully follow that much faster. That's what I'm hoping. Awesome. Yeah, I tend to agree with, with, with everything. I think the, the, the name of the game with this is tools. There's just, just the answer is that they, they this is this, the culmination of their tools being put into place. And we've seen that in the past with like the planetary tech going from taking years to get an entire system done to being able to do pyro in terms of it's just actual planets and, and moons in like a month. Uh, and now we're starting to see it with the other te tech, like the, the, the uh, outposts, the wrecks and, and so on and so forth. Um, and the more they move into these procedural tools, the, 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 the faster they're going to turn around and the better overall, at least the more, more options that the players will have. And I think it's a good, 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 we're in a good stage and we're going into a, into a better stage. And um, as the foundation of stuff like PES and, and other things start to get laid down, there's a lot less to worry about when they're building these tools. So, 
Uh, all right. Well, thank you all for, 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 for joining us. Make sure you're, you're checking out Hey, It's Nick and Night Cop on their content. Uh, Twitch.tv slash uh, N1, N Night, Night Cop with one instead of an I. And uh, Twitch.tv slash Hey, It's Nick. And of course, their YouTube content as well. And I, for these of you watching after the fact on YouTube, Right above Night Cop, right above the, the, the Perseus, you will see a link that will link to the question and answer session, which was released at the exact yeah. same time as this. So go click that and watch this after that fact. But if you're watching this on on, YouTube, on Twitch, <clears throat> we're going to take a few minutes to, you know, use the restrooms, get some of the drink, and then we'll be back with question and answers uh, for you all. So ask those questions in chat. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube as well, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Helps me out a lot. Uh, if you like the video as well, it'll help spread the word. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll know exactly when these drop. So for those of you who listen to these while you're working, you got that, you know, seven hour shift somewhere, or you're going on a walk or whatever, then you've got this, 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 this content ready and ready, ready, ready and ready to go. You already know when it comes out. So make sure you just a that. reminder, you only got six more hours to go. You can do it. I believe in you. We believe we all believe in yeah. you. You've got this. Speaking of, speaking of Paul, as one of your subscribers, I, I know I can't speak for everybody, but I'm a huge fan. I'll just tell you right now, I'm a huge fan of the fact that you pair them together. I go on these like 10 hour flights pretty frequently uh -huh. and I don't know what it was, but there was just this, uh, call it fate destiny. I would be getting ready to go on a flight and I download one and I'd be like, ah, oh, I'm going to have to wait till I get there to download the, the two hour Q and a session. So I just, mm -hmm. I'd finish the normal session and I'd be like, Oh, well now I'm sad. I want to do, I want to listen to more, but I'll just have to wait. Now you do them at the same time. I get to, I get to listen to the whole straight, you know, five, six hours, eight hours of HC vertigo is on there. <laughs> um, of the podcast yeah. all at the same time and it's yeah. great i love it so so i like the sure. change that's all i'm saying i'm not saying you have to keep it that way but i enjoy it right now I, everyone else seems to be like it because when i dropped the last two exactly at the same time they have the exact number of views so it seems that people just went right over to the need to the other one so uh d didn't do so did do so badly so uh, so make sure you do that. And again, hitting that, that, that bell icon will let you know exactly when they drop. And if you enjoyed this right video, you, you link, you like it, it'll spread it around. And of course, comment down below. Well, what are your thoughts on the, uh, the, the, the changes to derelicts and uh, the frontier outposts, colonialism outposts, and the future of player owned uh, and operated bases? Let us know, let me know in the comments below. And like I always say, uh, hope to see you someday in the black. <laughs>